one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the number. Oh, one more time, one more time, oh, one more. Oh,
you and I pray you didn't come to look at me but we come to lift the Savior up this morning come on anybody came to lift him up this morning come on stand back to your feet open up your mouth and let's give God a praise somebody said we came to celebrate 249 years if the Lord's been good you ought to say yeah I said open up your mouth and tell God thank you Come on, somebody, we come to lift him up this morning. Come on, so many souls been saved. So many bodies has been healed. So many pastors has came through. But tell your neighbors that I'm still alive. And I come to praise him this morning. Come on, is there anybody testimony this morning? I'm still alive. And I came to praise him this morning. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. Come on, everybody, clap your hands and tell God thank you. rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rise. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now just saying thank you for being you all by yourself. We ask right now, Lord, that you would just allow your spirit to take charge of this service. Lead God and direct it and make it that, that the people 
will rejoice in it and know that you are God all by yourself. This we ask the Son, in Jesus' name, amen. We want to say welcome to all those that have come out to celebrate with us on this great occasion. We want to say enjoy yourself. You can lift up your hands. You can praise God. You can stand, clap your hands. If you feel like running, run. But whatever you do, praise ye the Lord. So everybody in here that have breath, praise God on this day. Amen. We will now have our opening selection by the NBBC Combined Choir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I said, praise the Lord, everybody. So you got a neighbor and say, neighbor, we're looking for better days. Anybody looking for better days? If you're looking for better days, come on, lift your hands and praise them this morning.
do it one more time. starting at verse 7, and it reads, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore the opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we calling on your holy name one more time. Lord, you have been with us and stood with us, led, guided, and directed us for 249 years. Lord, it's a long time and it's been a long journey. But we've gone through many trials and tribulations. But we still stand moving forward, working for you. Lord, we thank you for each and every member, those that are here now, those of the past, and those that are coming. So, Lord, we know that you are not through with us yet. We come asking right now for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Not only do we ask for the anointing, Lord, we ask now that you would allow it run from the top of our head down to the sole of our feet. Lord, we ask it for the Shekinah glory. We're looking for your presence, O oh Lord. We're asking for you to come into this service and lead it in a way and uplift it in a way that will be pleasing in thy sight. Lord, we thank you for this celebration. And as of this day, we're going to start preparing for the next one, for 250th celebration, Lord, because you have been good to us. And when we look back over our lives, we can't say anything other than thank you. Because if it was not for you, where would we be? Look at us right now. You woke us up this morning. We might still be in a pandemic. Everybody is not in the church today. But, Lord, we know that you are still in charge. So, Lord, I'm asking right now that you do what you do. And, Lord, touch the hearts of those that thought it not, 
not robbery to come out today and give them whatever it is that they are in need of. But above all, Lord, touch the hearts and minds of those that are still sitting at home. Yes, they can see us on the internet. Yes, they can see us on YouTube. But Lord, let's not forsake the assembly one more time. So Lord, we know that after this day, we're going to fill this house up again for you. This we ask your son, Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's amazing. 
God's grace. What more could you ask for? Well, it's that time of the service when everybody gets quiet. I know most of us already put our money in the offering box. We don't get up and walk around anymore. But this is the time that we set aside for our offering. And we tell you, you can give it through Givelify. You can put it in the basket. You can bring it uh, to the church. We don't do a whole lot of moving around because of COVID. But again, even though we don't, we still love your giving. Because you're not giving it to us. You are giving back unto the Lord that which he has already given unto you. Amen. Well, now we, we, we are at this part of the program where I am to introduce. It says speaker. But we don't have a speaker today. We have a preacher. You know, if I'm going to go out and, and as I tell folks, uh, uh, as I give counseling and when I, I talk to other people and be a consultant, I speak to them on things. But here we have the man of God that is going to preach the word of God. So we have a preacher in the house. Now, I could stand here and tell you that... Uh, when I met Minister Keith Moore that became Reverend Keith Moore that is now Bishop Keith Moore that is a friend of mine. Uh, I, I, I can tell you that he is going to stand up and rightly divide the word of truth. He's going to exegete the scripture that he's going to preach from a historical lexicology standpoint and you'll look at me like an idiot and say what in the world is Ben talking about? So I'm going to tell you that you have a preacher in the house. And, and I'm going to introduce him the same way that we introduced the President of the United States. Will everybody please stand and receive ye him, the Bishop Keith Moore. Amen. Now, I, I, I am. Before I, I, my, the choir come and, and sing their last song and transition out of the choir loft, if they choose to, but you're welcome to stay if you choose not to. And we're going to turn the service over to, you may be seated, we're going to turn it over to the bishop. But before I turn them over, we have a, a, a guest bishop in the house. And, and, and you know, it, would, it is only proper that we extend him the opportunity to say a few words if he chooses. Amen. And, and then on the other side, we, we, we have a, another pastor in the house. And we will extend the opportunity that she may speak. And I'm going to let her introduce herself so you all can be surprised. Okay. She chooses not to. All right. That's fine. But uh, by the way, we don't have any announcement, but... Uh, I was asked about the wearing of masks. I went back and I researched and I got hold of the CDC and asked them about the wearing of masks in the church. It is their recommendation that if we are going to congregate together, everyone in the congregation shall wear a mask. Even though we may all uh, be vaccinated, We've had two shots, and we may even have had our booster, but they recommend that we continue to wear masks. Now, you say, well, why are we wearing masks and the choir is not? The choir is separated from you by a distance so that nothing that they do will harm you. It was the choir's decision that they not wear masks so that they could protect, project their voice, and they're all in agreement that they are all vaccinated and that they are in a group separate from you. If they come down to join you, 
they will then put on masks as you do. But for the purpose of the service, they want you to be able to hear everything that is being said, and it is by agreement. We started with masks, we went to face shields, and then they as a group came together and made the decision that they would sing without masks because they have verified and validated that they have all been vaccinated and they have all uh, had their booster shots of those that are eligible, and so they are well protected. And some of them still wear masks even though they are up there, but that is the reason why. So I'm just letting you know there's a reason for what we do. And, I, and so that we want to be all on one accord and lift up the name of Jesus in a manner that's pleasing in his sight. So as the choir sing their last song, they have the option to come down or stay where they are. And from that point on, we are going to turn this service over to the Bishop Keith Moore, and he will run it in his own way. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to look back and see what he's going to do. <laughs> Amen. Well, we came to celebrate today, didn't we? We came to celebrate. Come on, wave your hand if we came to celebrate on the night. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going to take a little time and count our blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going to take a little time and count our blessings. Come on, put your hand together. Are you? 
healed your body. As the Lord is healed your soul. As the Lord is made a way. We come to clap our hands. We come to do our dance. For the Lord be good. Oh, you heart of power. good he's worthy amen to be praised amen listen I just want to give honor God say thank you amen Bethlehem for the opportunity and people don't have to be nice amen I learned that long time ago but when they do make sure you say thank you and to my dear friend Pastor Williams thank you sir I served in the military for 21 years and I'm not responsible uh, totally 100% for me coming back safe. Amen. So the man that you see, amen, Bishop Daryl Hollowell, 
amen, was one of the person who was responsible for bringing me back. Amen. He touched thousands and thousands of soldiers. And what a coincidence. Amen. After retirement and coming to Charleston, South Carolina, that God will find a way that we can reconnect again. Sir, thank you. And to a great woman of God who raised me and drug me to church. Amen. I talk so much about mama. Amen. And mama is here. I'm going to ask if she can get a mic somewhere. Amen. Hey, they will bring you one. And I said, Pop's on the guitar. Amen. And I want my wife to stand if she will. <laughs> Amen. Wave your hand. See, listen, I like, uh, y'all know them candy bars, Butterfingers? I, I like them. Amen. She is my Butterfinger. Amen. And to my nephew, who I told him, I said, boy, you better go to sleep and come and visit your uncle. <laughs> so he stayed up all night long. I said, you're still going to church. <laughs> Amen. And we drug him anyway. At this time, I'm going to ask Pops and Mom if they will come with us with a selection. Hope everyone know this, but uh, if you don't, just join in with me anyway. See, <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus, glory to the Lamb. I just come to tell you, and I got good news. I just Be your be good news. I lay down my burden. Show never do. Show up my wrong. Lord, I'm on my way. I'm on Ooh. 
Praise him, all ye creatures in below. Amen. 249 years. Mm. If we can just pause right here and stand to your feet. Amen. And give the Lord a hand praise and go beside your hand praise. And while you are standing, I'm going to ask you to remain stand for the reading of the scripture. Amen. Our topic for this morning is God doesn't want our leftovers. Sir, topic is the best is yet to come. Amen. Look at somebody say, God doesn't want our leftovers. And the best is yet to come. And the best is yet to come. Scripture coming from Genesis 4 and 7, the King James Version. He said, if thou doest well, listen to this, shall not thou be accepted? And if thou does not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shall rule over him. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Look at somebody and say, God don't want your leftovers. And the best is yet to come. New Bethlehem, I'm sure that 249 years, it was hard for you to love sometime. Right. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Sometimes it was hard for you to love the deacons. Sometimes it was hard for you to love the pastor. 
Sometimes it was hard for you love the choir members. It's hard, yeah. It's hard to love sometimes. And to treat everyone, treat everyone the way they need to be treated, oh Lord. For God so loved the world, gave his only son that you might see how much he loved our love. Yeah. Real softly tell you, yeah. I want to love like that. Oh, I want to love, wanna love you. you. Bring me down just a little bit and say, I want to love, love like that. Listen, y'all. It's hard, yeah. yeah, yeah Mama, yeah. it's hard to love sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and to yeah, treat yeah. everyone, mm -hmm. treat everyone the way they need to be treated for mm -hmm. long. Yes, For God so loved the world. Gave his only son that you might see how much he loved. I want to love, love you. you. I want to love like that. Can I tell you what they did to me, y'all? Said I, I want to love you. They beat him all night long. Blood and water came down from his side. They took a crown and put on his head. I like that. But in the ninth hour, yes, he took and put a head in the I lock of his shoulder. He said, Father, forgive them. I like that. For they don't know what they are doing, Lord. Love you. And when I'm right. Yeah. In yeah, my car, yeah, I, like I said these words right here. I want to love you. you. Oh, Lord, I want to love like that. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, hallelujah. It's hard yes, sir. Yes, sir. to love people. People say, What well, I'm saving. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Love sometimes can be so difficult <laughs> that God commands it. And he said, love thou neighbors. Then he goes beyond that and he said, not only your neighbors, but love them that despitefully use you. And I'm sure in 249 years, there have been some struggles with loving some folks. Here in the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter, that we find that there are two sons from Adam and Eve. One is Cain. And one is Abel. The question is, what type of member are you? Are you a Cain member? That when God asks you about your brother, you'll say, am I my brother's keeper? Are you an Abel member that give your very best? Are you a Cain choir member? Or are you an Abel choir member? Are you a Cain pastor? Or are you an Abel pastor? Are you a Cain deacon? Or are you an Abel deacon? The thing that must be established in 249 years, Bethlehem. Is how did you come to God every Sunday morning? How did you come to him 
Wednesday night for Bible study. For David writes in Psalms 100, he said that when we come in, we shall enter his gates with thanksgiving. The question is, is anybody thankful to be in a house one more time? And he said, and in his courts we praise that we should give thanks to him and praise his what? His holy name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. God is faithful. And his faithfulness continues throughout 249 years of generation. There have been those who have come and gone. And New Bethlehem, God is still faithful to you. We need to establish some things before we move on. And the thing that we need to establish is that God taught Adam. And Adam taught his sons to know better. When you are hating folks for no reason at all, you know better. When you are causing hell for no reason at all, you know better. The Bible said in Genesis, the second chapter, that he teaches Adam a simple lesson. Overseer, he teaches him about a woman. For he brings Eve to Adam. And he said, this is woman. Every man in here should be shouting. So he teaches him how to love a woman. Genesis 2 and 19, pastor, he teaches Adam how to look within himself. And name all the animals. For the Bible said that he formed all the birds and the wild animals. And he brought them to his son. And he told Adam, he said, name them. Bethlehem, I have a question for you. What are you naming people? What are you calling folks? The Bible said that life and death lies in the power of your tongue. Then Genesis 2 and 15, he said, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it. And he kept it. Look at somebody said, put him. Here he established worship. This type of language is dealing with peer worship. It is no wonder John said that when you come through these doors, that those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The word put is important. It is not like the word we use and when we say, I put tomatoes in my garden, Marita. Or I put my socks in the washing machine. It is here in Genesis 2 and 15 that the Lord God took man. He sat him up in the garden and he shows a connection with worship. 249 years, worship was always in the picture. Let me show you what I mean. In the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter, the 33rd verse, Moses instructs Aaron to take a jar and put Omar a manna inside of it. He placed it before the Lord to keep it through all of the generations. When the worshipers brought it, it was their first offering. In other words, it was their best. They brought it to the fruit of the temple. And the priest would say these words right here. And behold, now I bring my first fruit of the ground which, O oh Lord, you have given me. And the question remains today is that when you step foot in the sanctuary, when you step foot in God's temple, can you say that I have given God my very best? Now, since we have established that God has taught Adam a lot, we can also establish that God also taught Cain and Abel how to give. When you come to Bible study, the pastor tries to teach you how to give. 
when you come to morning worship, we teach you how to give. And not necessary money, but your time and your talent. I'm coming to you, Dad. But your time and your talent. But the question remains, did I give God my very best? The Bible says here that Cain himself was a tiller of the ground. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Anybody that's know about the keep of the tree, the translation, it deals with pastorship. How do I take care of my members? Uh, am I praying for them or am I cursing them? Cain himself was a tiller of the ground. Am I doing the saw the, the way that God wants me to do it? Am I getting it ready for harvest time? Am I out evangelizing and bringing more people to church? Or am I causing hell to divide it? They knew better. Look at somebody say, God don't want your leftovers. I went down to a farm that they call the Gallup Farm. There was an old lady that was buying sweet potatoes. She bought like at least 10 boxes. And I was like, what is this old lady going to do with all these sweet potatoes? I only got three. Them boxes was heavy. And I looked at her, ma'am. I said, ma'am, do you need some help carrying the sweet potatoes to your car? And she said, son, please help me out. And so I carried like eight boxes to her car. She had her young granddaughter with her, which was six years old. And I said, ma'am, are you going to cook all those sweet potatoes? She looked at me. She said, I'm going to cook the majority of them. And she said, I'm going to fit so many pies. And, and the young girl looked at the, her grandmother and said, Grandma, I don't want no leftovers. <laughs> My wife know me, and I'm not a fan of leftovers. But every now and then, I will sit down and eat myself some good leftovers. What God is saying today, although I would eat leftovers, the Lord is saying that he don't want your leftovers, but he wants your very, your very best. God don't want your leftover praise, and he don't want your leftover songs, but he wants your leftover best. The Bible said that there came a time when Cain had to go before the Lord, it was Sunday mornings. He had to worship him. And he came before the Lord and he gave God a second best. And the Bible said that Abel gave God his very best. But you know how sometimes folks are in the church that we get jealous of one another because it seems as if they are being blessed. But the Bible said that he got so much hatred in his heart towards his brother uh, that he looked at him and jealousy began to creep on him. Uh, and he said, I'm going to kill this joker. Uh, is there anybody in New Bethlehem uh, that has looked at anybody in the choir stand uh, and say, they can't sing like I can sing uh, or he can't preach like I can preach? Uh, but I hear the Lord said uh, that if you will give me your very best, uh, that I will receive you too. Uh, I didn't come to church uh, for your leftovers. Uh, well, the Bible tell me these words uh, that he said to Cain. Uh, he said, Cain, uh, if you give me your very best, uh, if you give me your tithe, uh, and you give me your offering, uh, if you give me your time uh, and you give me your talents, uh, I'll receive you too. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that King was so evil uh, and so jealous in his heart uh, that he gave God, uh, he gave God his leftovers uh, and he killed his brother. Uh, the Bible declares uh, that his blood uh, went down to the ground uh, and was crying out uh, but look at somebody and say uh, the best uh, is yet to come uh, the best uh, is yet to come uh, and although uh, 
the ground was cursed. God have a way of making things better. I declare unto you that in the book of Malachi, from the book of Matthew, that heaven was shut up, but God got a plan. Look at somebody and say that he got a plan, that the best is yet to come. They talked about me, but the best is yet to come. That there was a virgin by the name of Mary, and the angel said, Oh, Mary, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a son, and name him Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes, but he grew up, and at the age of 33, the Bible declared that God looked and said, Son, it is time for you to die. I know you gave me mediocre. I know you didn't give me your very best. But the Bible declared that Jesus said, I love the world, that I will give my son. So he went down at 2000, at something generation, and he gave his son. They nailed him to the cross, and they beat him all night long. But he never, he never, mama, said a moment in word for 249 years. I hear somebody say, keep on keeping on. Keep on singing, it's gonna be all right. Keep on praying, it's gonna be all right. They lift him, they lift him after all of the hell. They lift him, I hear when they say, if I, if I be lifted, I draw, I draw, oh man, unto me. Can you didn't? Give me your best, but I gave my only begotten son. It's hard, it's hard to love sometimes and to treat everyone, treat everyone the way it should be treated. Oh Lord, for God so loved the world, He gave His only Son that the wing might see how much He loves us. I wanna love you. Oh, I wanna love like that. Bethlehem said, I wanna love. Oh, I want to love like I know you lied on me, but I want to love you. I know you talked about me, but oh, I want to love like that. You had some hard times, but I want to love you. And I know you want to throw in the time, but I want to love like that. Some people left, but that's all right. I, I want to love, love you. Oh, I, I want to love, love like that. that. Somebody said, I want to yeah, love, love, love you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we want to love, love like Real that. softly, real softly. Before I go listen, when you go through your difficult time, and Lord knows you will. And there goes some time when you're going to get discouraged. Mother, there's going to be some times when you want to throw in the town. But let me tell you what they did to Jesus. They beat him all night long. They put the nails in his hands. It's all right, ain't it? Spirit and put him in his eyes. Blood and water came down and went to the ground. And although able blood was crying out, 
I'm gonna love like The veil that. began to rip into y'all. But he never said a mumbling word. I'm love like that. He said, I wanna love, said, I wanna I love, love you. Real softly, there may be one today. I wanna love. That's that preach I've been giving God my leftovers. But I'm not even saved. In the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, Paul writes these words. He said, who can go in the deep to bring Jesus Christ back from the dead? He said, nobody can. But if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raises you, he said, thou shall be saved. It's with the mouth, man, make a confession. It's with the heart you believe. You may say, I'm already saved. I just get tired sometimes real quietly. I just get tired sometimes. And although I go to church, it seems like nothing is going to change. You may say I have a sickness in my body. The medication don't do me no good. The altar is open. Now you ain't got to get beside nobody. But even if you want to step out from where you are, you can come. Whoa, I want to love like that. Said I want to love. I want to love you. Whoa, I want to love like that. Real softly, real softly. But I see you coming. There'll be another. They said there's room at the cross. But there'll be another. Pastor, Pastor, is it okay if Bishop pray? We're going to ask you if you will for those who did not come. That that Bishop go forth and pray. That you would just lift your hands and get everything, your petition to the Lord. Amaze. Sing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like us. I once was lost, but now I've been found. Now, Lord, now, Lord, yes, sir. we thank you that you woke us up this morning. Yes, sir. You, sir. Now, Lord, yes. we thank you that you started oh, us yes. on our way. You, God, we was able to rise up yes. this morning. Yes, yes. We were able to have a right mind yes, to think. We had our eyes to see and our ears yes. to hear. Father God, we're able to swallow yes, sir. somebody in the hospital right now. They can't swallow. They can't eat. They can't even move their own body. But God, you allowed us to rise up this morning with the finger of your love and to make our way to the house of the Lord. And now, Lord, we're here this morning. We're here by your grace and your mercy. Father God, your grace allowed us to come in and to worship you. And to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Lord, now, Lord, all we want to say is thank you. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for New Bethlehem. Thank you for 249 years. God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you because you soothe our sorrows. We want to say thank you because you drive away all our tears. We want to say thank you because it's in your word. Your word soothes our sorrows your word 
drives away all of our tears. We got your word, Lord. We got your word. And now that we have your word, we ask still, God, that you continue to ride with us. Your word tell us you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Your word tell us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own.